What's going on YouTube world? This is Jacob Viral for a big build update. Uh, something I've been working on the past two days, Friday and Saturday for a video today. And of course, as the thumbnail you can tell, it's a fourth order. So I now have a fourth order transformed from a ported enclosure. So I first had a ported enclosure, now I got a fourth order build. So the ported enclosure I actually had, I didn't build, I had a friend build it for me. Now this one I built particular, so I know exactly every single spec to it, as well as what I'm going to be doing in uh, upcoming videos for trials and tests, tips, things that I'll be doing to the build, as well as things I can give you all suggestions for, especially for the fourth orders. But just concept for anybody, whether you got a sealed box, you're a bandpass enclosure, fourth, sixth, eighth order, um, just in general ported enclosures, anything. So stay tuned the next couple of weeks on and off. I'll be doing video series on these topics and more others. So. First thing before anything, Jacob Vile, why would you go from a ported enclosure within a few weeks you go to a fourth order? So I had a fourth order and then I went when I had my wall build and then I got a ported enclosure. I figured why would I want to make such a big box for a fourth order? But before that, the question was why would you go ahead and get a box built, get a, a ported enclosure built and then go ahead and do a fourth order out of it um, later? There was no real reason for the explanation behind it. I just didn't like the bandwidth of imported enclosure, so I was ready to immediately go back into the fourth order range that I had. Uh, whether I went from a wall build to a no wall build now, um, not worried about getting high numbers, not putting any more money investment in it and um, equipment. I want to stay with a single tenant subwoofer, so that's where this concept is. I'm decided on I'm going back to the fourth order range because I like the bandwidth of a fourth order instead of a ported enclosure. Another thing that's going to be asked is, hey, why wouldn't you do sixth order since you had the space? So I don't like six because I don't have cone control. I would either choose fourth order or ported enclosure. I have the room for a sixth order. I could have built a sixth order easily, but I want cone control as well as I can have a lot more um, gains on the meter as well as output when it comes to fourth orders because you can go in a higher ratio aspects to get um, louder output. It might be not as good of a bandwidth response as a sixth order, but I know I'm going to be able to get louder with this single tenant subwoofer on a fourth order instead of a sixth. So new levels. Um, I didn't make a video on it, but the ported enclosure, I got to a 146.5 dB. That was the highest I got out of it. So a 46.5 dB was um, the glass score that I got out of my 10 inch sub. So before I think you guys saw like a 44. So over two dB gain through a couple of tests and videos and other things that I did. So now I get to show y'all how it looks in here. It's not the prettiest and of course I'm not done, but I'm making it happen guys. Um, this is gonna be a fun project for me and I'll be able to share videos along the way for the ones that care on my channel, Jacob Ball too. So go ahead and hit that like button now if you haven't already. And I got a couple of things I'll be explaining about the box process and specs and pretty much everything that I've done different from before. So before that, just want to say thank you guys for always watching. Um, I'm pretty happy with where I am right now. The sub's still breaking a little bit as well. And I still got a lot of tweaks and things like I mentioned earlier to do with the box. But right now, currently, this is where it is. I have a sealed box for the single 10-inch Crescendo Control Toe 10 on a SoundCube 2200 at half ohm. So the sealed box is right at 0.8 cubes after sub displacement and bracing. So I have 0.8 cubes sealed and the ported enclosure, as you guys can tell, it's really big. So the ported side after bracing, sub displacement, the sealed box displacement, after pretty much everything, just net volume for the ported enclosure side right now is right at 6.3 net. So it goes from 7.8 net to 6.3 net. So right now I have 6.3 cubes net ported enclosure space. And that's going from this port line all the way back between the three measurements added together minus the subwoofer box for the sealed section. So this is a fourth order and I built a sealed enclosure before doing the fourth order case scenario because I like to have fine tuned specs that I can adjust. So what I did was if I need to, I can pull that sealed enclosure out. As you can see, it's about half an inch shorter than the height of the uh, box. So I have this front panel I made where I can literally remove this whole front panel. It's uh, double baffled. I can remove this panel and I can be, able, I have a piece of wood right here. I'll show you real quick. So you see this, there's two pieces of two by sixes, but over here, there's nothing. So I have space gap from here over. That's all empty. 
I can slide this box out at any given time I want to. And if I want to adjust or change any tuning specs on my sealed enclosure, I can pull this sealed enclosure out as well if I want to. I'm probably not going to, but hey, I have easy access right here to do that. Um, a lot of enclosures, normally people would have the top wood brace, like the top port of the box removable. I don't like doing that because then you have a lot of le um, preventative measures where you have to keep removing and adding your bracings as well as you got to keep readjusting your top brace baffle and you can you have to worry about a lot more air leaks and your holes on the whole top over time you start wearing out all of the threads so then your wood isn't as durable as it was especially if you're removing it and doing a lot of tests like i like to do so my sealed enclosure i'm trying not to have to do because i got a lot of screws in it i have to remove well i don't have to work on it no more but i'm going to be working around everything else so i'll be doing some fine tunings adding some brace more bracings maybe do some fine tunings with the port be doing a couple of videos on that and explaining some concepts behind it so you can utilize these things that we bringing up in your own build so hope you guys you like this so it is a eight to one ratio fourth order so it's a really big ratio fourth order i utilized my space i could have went higher up i was going to do i could have gone up to as high as a 14 to 1 ratio but I wanted to keep it around the, the eight to 10 ratio mark so I can have a really high peak and uh, it's not gonna be a flat response, but it can be a, a lot louder output than you would get out of a ported enclosure or six being a high ratio. So it's not the prettiest, but it works. I put some two by fours in there for bracings. Got a lot of tests to do, but let me know what you guys think. Comment and stay tuned for more videos on this. And this is Jacob Vile 2 out. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So stay tuned. And let me know what you think. Definitely a big change from going from the ported enclosure to the fourth order.